Lock and Key has been the magical series we have all been waiting for. From the emblem vibes of Stranger Things, the chills of hauntings of Hill House, to the impossibly good-looking cast of Riverdale, the series has that extra touch of spookiness that makes it worth to watch it. With two seasons under the belt, we are here today to take a look behind the scenes of the series and tell you how things were going off-screen. Introduction Before we move forward with what has been happening behind the scenes, let's take a short break and see where the series even comes from. Based on the critically acclaimed comic book series by Joe Hill and Gabrielle Rodriguez, the series follows the Locke family who are returning to their ancestral home after their father of Rendell was shockingly murdered. This ancestral home they return to is filled with dark secrets from Rendell's past, and the series of keys with magical powers are the way to unveil them. There is the head key, which allows them to step inside their brain, a matchstick key that gives you fire starter skills at your fingertips, a ghost key that lets you, well, it is self-explanatory. Become a ghost. Key that can let you step outside your body and be a ghost. And so on. One of the most interesting things about the series, as it is quite fond of jumping and intertwining genres, including the likes of fantasy, horror, family drama, high school, love stories, and many more, all of which are making this series very addictive, as it is constantly changing its narrative, just like the events in the series itself. There is simply not a chance that you will watch the first three episodes of the series and not continue to binge the whole season in one go. So with that out of the equation, we are safe to proceed with a thing all of us are here for, a look behind the scenes of the series and how things worked out during the filming of the series. Making of Key House The series looks beautiful on the screen, filmed in the cold Toronto. However, there were more than just chills from the mysteries and demons lurking in the shadows. The cast had to wear up to five long johns, and they would still be cold. The weather was so cold that they couldn't even speak. In one scene, Jessup couldn't even say the R's and T's. The Canadian snow and cold weather were perfect for the filming location of the series, and the crew working on the series were also very good at finding the building to match all the imaginations the fans had about Key House. The house itself can be seen to be built for the snow, both from the inside and the outside. The entire property seems like it was made solely for the series. The cast was excited to film at this location, despite the weather being so cold. And what made it worth it? Well, all the details and the mind-blowing interior set pieces. True Fears of the Cast According to Jessup, the only scary moments he remembers from the set are the performance he did when asked whether the chilly atmosphere ever transferred on him. Jack, you know, that doesn't actually mean... Darby Stanchfield, on the other hand, says that she is too pragmatic to be scared of the supernatural and that the scariest thing for her while being on set was that she would have to work with stand-ins for the younger members of the cast. Stanchfield continued, The stand-in child isn't talking to you. So the voice is coming in from someone off-camera, 30 feet away, and you are trying to have the same moment-to-moment -moment magic that you had the same actor before you. A pretty scary but regular occurrence happening behind the scenes of the series while filming on set. One other interesting thing about the whole behind-the-scenes stand-ins shenanigans is the way Jackson Robert Scott says goodbye on the set when he is done with filming. Take a look at it yourself. Great work today, bud. Get some rest, yeah? Thank you. I'll try. Aloha! Good stuff. We all love a haunted house story. Over the years, ever since the film industry started properly, we are all witnesses to a rich TV and film history of haunted houses, mansions, and creaky old buildings with locked doors, dingy basements, and secret attics. Prime examples are The Changling, Poltergeist, The Others, the previously mentioned The Haunting of Hill House, and many more. Lock and Key plays into the same narrative and fits perfectly into the rich tradition of the genre. The elements of playing with the conversations and tropes of haunted house horror are there before us. However, the series also managed to turn some of these stereotypes on their head. Early on in the series, the lead female character, Kinsey, removes her fear of emotion using the head key, ensuring that she is the opposite of the hopeless damsel in distress. However, the series is not shy to dive deeper into all those creepy old buildings in the wilderness kind of thing. You know, the classic theme. The cast even expressed themselves that even while filming on set, the series tapped into everyone's greatest fears. For example, Connor Jessup's sleeping spot where he felt the safest when he was a kid. 
Even behind the scenes, the cast were all able to experience the very noise coming through the window. No matter where you live, a house, an apartment, or an old barn in the country, everyone is familiar with it. Thus, this kind of elements that were present during filming was what the cast worshipped, helping them bring out the most from their characters. The Skill of Scared Acting when starring in a somewhat horror series, one of the biggest challenges the cast of Lock and Key had to overcome was how to pull off convincing, scary acting, especially when faced with surreal, magical events and fantastical sequences. Jessup said that if he ever found himself in a situation like that in real life, he would be frozen to the spot. And if it ever comes to someone pointing a gun to his head or a speeding car coming toward him, he would still be frozen. We guess that there is no one type of fear out there. Huh. For the series, whenever there was a scene involving magic and scares, the entire cast spent extra time rehearsing because they had to do a lot of expressions, not wanting to repeat themselves in every next scene, trapping themselves with the same expression on their face. The cast tried to tap into every scary moment differently, depending on what is in front of them, thus delivering the best expression possible at the given moment, which is hard, as you don't have a full understanding of what is going on. Making of Lock and Key in one form or another, a lock and key adaptation has been in the works for over 12 years. The hit comic book series always felt ready to be brought to life. But over the years, movies have failed to get off the grid, and pilots quickly turned down by TV networks and platforms. However, Netflix did not back off from the series. And how did they manage to make it while we are at that too? One of the biggest help to Netflix were both Gabrielle Rodriguez and Joe Hill, always there to provide the knowledge they have and how things should turn out. That and also put the project in the most capable hands of the executive producers of the show, Carlton Cuse and Meredith Averell, a group of people making one cohesive team. The minds behind the scenes all work to deliver the best series possible, as many fans of the comics are holding dear to what they were able to experience from reading the comics in the first place thus continuing their enjoyment with the live-action series. The show is not a literal interpretation of the comics. It is a fresh new take, with many elements of the comics integrated in the best way possible, for old and new fans of the franchise alike. On a related note, tell us down in the comments below, what are your thoughts on the series so far, if you watched it? And if you haven't, what are you even waiting for? And also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you would like to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.